What is up, everybody? How's it going? Get my desktop audio on here for you guys. All right, I'm already seeing a lot of donations coming in through the uh, super chat and everything, guys. So I just want to, uh, I'll probably I'll go over this a couple times throughout the course of the stream because this is the important part of why we're doing this. Um, so you all know about Hurricane Dorian, and we're going to do the stream in support of Hurricane Dorian victims. And my company has actually set up a relief portal, or I'm sorry, a donation portal that any donations given to them, uh, whether it be from their pilots or their flight attendants, any employee through my company, the company will then match those donations. And then that will all be sent to Hurricane. So basically we're getting double the amount of uh, donations for victims. Whether if, you know, if I just put a Red Cross link in the description, then you donate $1, they get $1, right? But now, through, if I do it through my company, donate $1, my company will match $1, so now that's $2. And hey, that could be a water bottle for a kid that has absolutely nothing after losing everything, and all they want is just some clean water. So a little bit goes a long way. Um, I do want to point out real quick that the donation link is the best way to submit your donations. I'm seeing super chats come in, and that's because the donation portal through my company is actually linked to PayPal. So it'll be much faster. Like after the stream, I can literally just go in and uh, donate, you know, PayPal to PayPal, and they'll get it instantly within whatever 12 hours or however long PayPal needs to process the money. The super chats. What, what's, I've seen a lot of super chats coming in, guys. Thank you for that. Um, I don't, I won't be able to give it to the donation portal immediately because YouTube actually holds all funds that come in through super chat for, I think it's about a month. So basically it's uh, September 9th right now. So I won't actually see the super chat donations until October. Uh, I believe it's right out the mid mid month of October. So it's kind of a month behind. So, and I just was, I was afraid that, you know, maybe the donation portal or whatnot may not be up by that point. So if you are going to donate, I prefer it be through the donation link in the description. It'll just take you to the V1 simulations page. You can donate from there. Um, if you do it through super chat, just so you're aware, YouTube does take quite a bit of it. I think it's like 40% or something. And then I won't see that those funds until later on. So I won't be able to get those funds to the Red Cross as fast as I will is if you do it straight from the donation link in the description below. Either one of them. I know Streamlabs pops one up right on top of the description, and I also have one kind of mid-description length. But now that we got that out of the way, guys, we are going to do a live stream today. And thank you so much for everybody that's already do donated. Alberto, uh, DE, and Calbara. Uh, thanks for the stream and helping my people in the Caribbean. Awesome. Alberto come in, $20 bombs, Calbara, $9. So thank you guys so much. And uh, this should be a good stream. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to simulate a relief flight. We're sitting in Jacksonville, Florida, which ironically was supposed to be uh, devastated from this hurricane before it kind of changed pass. And we're going to depart from the cargo ramp here. And we're going to fly a relief flight down the coastline of Florida. Then we're going to cut across and go into the Bahamas. So we're at the cargo ramp. We've got all the doors open. We're getting fuel. We're getting bags. Or not bags. We're getting supplies, I guess. And uh, let's get to it. So we are in the Flight Factor A320. I'm going to adjust my audio settings here for you guys. I, it seems like every time I start a stream, I get an update, and then it wipes all my settings. So I'm readjusting the audio settings right now. If they are off or they need to be adjusted, please let me know in the chat. Daniel Smith says, sometimes I forget that not everyone is in the best of situations right now. I hope the best for the people affected right now. Daniel Smith, that's absolutely uh, true. And you know what? As you know, if you live in a, uh, in a first, uh, first world country and we're blessed to live in, in where we do and we have TVs and you know, we complain about our 4G LTE or 5G service isn't fast enough. And you know, we, we see on TV all these disasters that are happening, right? We see it, oh, it's coming, it's going to be bad, it's going to be a bad... Uh, thank you, Dumbo61 coming in, $10. When I receive uh, when I receive salary view, it always gets a small portion of it, well-deserved. Thank you, Dumbo61. Thanks for the donation. That's going straight to Red Cross um, after the stream. So what I was saying is we see all these horrible events unfolding on TV, right? And we're like, oh, that's going to be terrible. And then we see the event. We see the devastation. We see the carnage. And then two days later, it's off the TV. It's off the news. And we don't think about it. 
when in reality, these people are down there with absolutely nothing. I mean, the, the hurricane, Cat 5, literally came right over the house, or their houses, and just parked itself there and pounded the islands for, for days. So um, they're still living in a very, very tough situation, and we're going to try to go on down there, and we're going to help them not only virtually in the simulator here, but we are going to help them financially with your guys' support. So thanks for that. All right, let's get this aircraft ready to go. We want to make sure we have a nice, safe flight down there to the Bahamas. We're going to be flying into Marsh Harbor, which I actually have never flown into. I have know nothing about it other than it's pretty much underwater right now. So let's go ahead and get the aircraft set up. I had it sitting on ground power, and the aviators are aligned. You can see the flashing up here that just needs a position from the uh, MCDU. So let's go ahead and go through our flow here. Oops, we'll leave that on. We'll leave that on. We do fire test engine one. Looks good. One, two, and three. And we can go ahead and actually let's come down here and check our fuel. We've got 5.3. We're going to need more than that on board. So let's go to our baggage loader here. What I'm going to try to do is let's see if we can. I'm going to go heavy cargo. We're going to have to play with the CG here. I'm going to set max cargo. Oh boy. Passengers, I'm going to. We're going to have very few. Let's say we just have a few passengers donation. scattered throughout. Donation. Another donation coming in. Polytoximaniac 1106. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate your support. It's going to go to people in need. All right, let's go ahead and let's see if we can put a few people up front. Let's say we have, you know, some relief members or doctors. I'm trying to. I want to see how our CG is going to look here. Uh, if I go to perf data, on the forward side of donation. the CG coming in. Another donation coming in. I am Dimitri, $50 bomb. Thank you for all you do for the hobby and for those poor folks at the Bahamas. I have very fond memories of that place since, uh, since that was where he had a honeymoon. Godspeed. Thank you so much, Dimitri. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you. And the people of the Bahamas are going to be thanking you guys here. All right, so I'm looking at the CG. I'm loading this plane kind of funky on purpose. Um, we're simulating full cargo and very few people. I want to make sure we're in the CG range. This looks okay to me. Zero fuel weight, 33.4, down 1.0. That looks normal, so I think we might leave it just like that. So we can go ahead and we're going to keep it. We'll say we got eight doctors and, and relief people on board. We'll start moving the stairs. And as far as cargo, we can go ahead. We're going max cargo. We're taking all the supplies we can. So this will be interesting flying. I've never actually loaded the flight factor up with max cargo. See how it handles. And as far as fuel goes, we got to be careful. We don't uh, we don't over takeoff weight here. A 145.505 is our takeoff weight, but that's in pounds. I'm going to have to make sure we don't have too much weight. Uh, if I take nine, let's see if I set 10,000. And let's go back to our perf data here. We still look like we're in normal here. Zero fuel, gross weight is 62.9. Uh, I'm gonna need to calculate to pounds. <laughs> so let's do a quick calculations because I don't want to be over max. So let's just call it 63,000 63, kg to pounds would be 138.891. So we're below our 145.505. That is actually going to work out just fine. So we just got to make sure we have enough fuel. We'll set that. And let's go ahead and load the box here. So we're going to be taking off from K Jacksonville to Marsh Harbor, Mike Yankee Alpha Mike. We're going to be flight number is going to be uh, relief. We'll do RE and 91. Cost index of 99. We're going to cruise down there at 350. And align on ref, confirm the alignment. Cosmic Tabloon saying everyone planning on donating, please remember to donate via the Streamlabs link in the description. That way, V1 receives 100% of your donation put to the good cause. Absolutely correct. Thank you, Cosmic, for that. Um, uh, thanks for uh, for putting that in there. Yeah, I was, thought I had a uh, bot, but I guess it's not working too well, so. We'll have to fix that. But yeah, remember, if you are going to donate, try to do it through the Streamlabs link. That way we can get the help as soon as possible. 
if you do have your super chat it still will get down there it'll just be a little bit longer so I can't guarantee that they're gonna get the full value of your donation all right we're gonna take off out of Jacksonville and I should probably look up the weather yeah let's see what we got we have Visibility, let's see, with 4,000 few, 2,500 standard visibility, more than 10. Light and variable, 30, 13 on the altimeter, so we can take any runway we want. Let's go ahead and take off of, uh, what's this one right here? This is got to be 1, 4, nope, got to be runway 3, 2. I think it's 3, 2. I haven't been to Jack's in a while. Get rid of that, get rid of that. Let me look at the uh, ND here. Sorry, I was flicking around the screen. Yeah, that looks that looks good. And let's go to constraint mode. All right. So, all right, we're going off of runway three two. No SID. Oops, I don't have to do that. Insert, and then our route of flight is actually going to be direct to Craig's Charlie Romeo Golf. Insert off of Craig. We're going to take Airway J45. Basically, this flight should actually be pretty scenic. We're going to go down the coastline of Florida. I got a lot of fork boy out there, so that should look pretty good. We're going to go J45 to Ormond Beach, and then we're going to make a left turn towards the Bahamas, followed by J79 to TRV, which, uh, what is TRV? I should know that one. TRV is Treasure K, Treasure, Treasure something, I think it's Treasure. TRV, insert of that. So there's Craig, Orman, Airway all the way down to TRV. And after that, we're going to go direct to Freeport, ZFP, or Zulu, Fox, Papa. VOR. So we got two. This is interesting. We have a duplicate ZFP. There's a Looks like an ADF or an NDB and a VOR. We're going to take the VOR, ZFP. And then from there, it's pretty much direct to Mike Yankee Alpha Mike. Can I, is there an arrival? Let's plan on doing the RNAV 09. And we can change that, of course, once we get there. We're going to leave that disco in there so we know uh, that we're getting close and we got to set up. So there is our flight plan. Get rid of you. Ed Reed says need a pop up or need a pop screen. Need a pop screen on microphone. A little bit hissy on the S's. I apologize, Ed Reed. I've actually been looking into getting some like a quality microphone for this instead of just my headset. Secondary initialize K Jax to K Jax. In case we have to do an air return. Always good to have that in the backup. We plan this arrival. We'll just come right back to the visual one four. Yeah, what did I say? The altimeter was two zero one three, I believe. Close enough. Temperature is thirty two, nice and toasty. Light and variable winds. We'll throw in zero for zero. No MBA because this will be a visual approach right back around. So that looks good. And it be. Let's go ahead and that looks good. Donation. Donation. Another donation coming in. Jawuku donated 1235. Best regards to you and the people of the Bahamas. Thank you, Jawuku. Thanks for your support. The people of the Bahamas will definitely appreciate it. Alright, so zero fuel weight is 53.2. If you wait, 33.4, that looks good. All right. That looks good. And then our prog page is going to be KJAX runway 14. We'll set it right there. Perf data. What do they got us for V speeds? Uh, I'm going to bump them actually. We're going to do 138, 139, 141. Flaps 1. No flex. We're going to max Toga this baby out of here. 
All right, so we got our box. That looks good. Let's go ahead and get the APU fired up. We go ahead and get our fuel pumps on. We have our fuel. Actually, let's just make sure we have our fuel. Did I actually load it? 9.7, there we go, that looks good. Daniel Smith says, yeah, those right-hand air stairs are triggering me. Hey man, we're loading up a relief flight. We need uh, air stairs everywhere we can get them. All the supplies. All right, let's spool this puppy up here. Love the sound of that. Ed Reed says, according to the Weather Channel, one hour ago, Marsh Harbor was the hardest hit. Yeah, I knew it was pretty bad down there. I didn't know it was the hardest hit. That's pretty rough. <laughs> Cosmic says he'll give a lot. I'll post a message for you. Thank you, Cosmic. Appreciate it. Hello, Simone Tuba and Slam Cannon. What is going on, guys? Good to have you here. We'll go ahead and get rid of our rest of our service here. We no longer need the fuel truck. And we no longer need the chocks. And let's just make sure we do have a good start. If you bleed, turn that puppy off. And now we can disconnect around power. All right, let's get out of here. We're gonna climb up to, oops. 10,000 feet initially out of here. And I think we're just about ready. Let's go ahead and plan our pushback. Off the cargo ramp here, the south cargo ramp. We're gonna go right here. Route of cockpit, plan acknowledged. Call me through the yes, menu when you're ready. The web browser for the flight factory. Yeah, man, I'll, I'll show you that. I normally use the web browser quite a bit for uh, the flight factory, just blowing up charts and stuff. Take a look. We are closed up. Everything has been removed. I think we're ready to get out of here, guys. So let's go ahead and get our pushback going. Ground to cockpit. Toe is driving up. Jet Daniel Smith. There are four main cabin doors in the front of the cabin. One left and one right. To the rear of the cabin, one left and right. There are four overwing exits. I appreciate it. Daniel Smith, you should do some uh, voice recording for flight attendant PAs. It sounds like you got it down. Quinton Johnson, hey captain, I'm new to the stream, stumbled across it about two weeks ago and I'm hooked. I love the stream and I love Airbus. Keep up the amazing work. Thank you, Quinton. Glad to hear that, man. All right, let's go ahead and actually make sure we got everything. I'm just gonna turn our beacon light on. I should probably do a flow, be a good captain here. And that looks good, that looks good. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed, ready to connect. Let's run a checklist, pre-flight checklist made. Here we go, maintenance log and tail number, that's on board and checked. Gear pins and covers removed, signs are on and auto. Aviers, we are navin. Fuel, 9.5 required, 9.7 on board. Altimeters, 30, 13, let's go ahead and set that once, twice, and three times. Set EFB. Check it. Pre-flight checklist. Complete. Donation. Donation. Another donation coming in. Doodle ten dollar bomb. Thanks V1. Doodle, appreciate it, man. The people of. Uh, so connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Brakes release. There we go. Well, all kinds of donations coming in. Dougal, thanks. Starting pushback. Appreciate it, man. The people up in the Hamas will definitely appreciate that. Captain Clueless coming in with the super chat, 20 bucks. Bomb V1 seems Streamlabs takes PayPal, which I don't have. Great using the community for good. Hopefully one of many lots of causes out there. Thank you, Captain Clueless. Appreciate that. Uh, sorry that you don't have PayPal. I am trying to set up, uh, I guess it's kind of a uh, loop point now, but I was trying to set up a couple other methods of payment, but for some reason it was acting kind of wonky and I, I, I wanted it to be as streamlined as possible. The PayPal donations are gonna go directly to my company and then they're gonna match that. So whatever we raise is gonna be doubled. 
how that's going to be direct to the victims within you know whatever process, uh, processing time it takes 12 hours the super chats i'm going to do i'm going to as soon as i get them from youtube i will try to get them right back into the portal if not i'll just donate them personally into uh into red cross foundation but like i was saying with the super chats it's just harder to get those funds actually from youtube because it takes a lot longer for the streamer, or in this case me, to actually get a hold of those funds. But they will all get there somehow, one way or another, guys. We're going to do it. All right, let's run a before start checklist. Windows, doors, and slides. They're closing on. The beacon is on. It's probably not, but I should turn it on here in a second. Beacon is will be on. Thrust levers are idle. Parking brake is off. Transponder, we need to set that. So instead of looking at this beautiful Batavia wing, let's fly the airplane. The beacon is on, actually. And the transponder needs to be set to 4522. And that is an on, and we'll put it in TRI once we get out of here. Got the pushback coming in. Fifth Freedom Simulations. I believe that is Dimitri. I uh, saw that earlier in one of your, one of your chats. Um, Fifth Freedom Simulations says also don't forget to hit the like button, folks. 73 watching and only 31 Next likes. Operation complete. Set parking brake. All right, brakes are set. Clear disconnect. Show me the pin out front. Uh, Disconnecting toe, stand Fifth by. Freedom, absolutely right. You know, normally I don't ask for likes and, and stuff like that, but today, guys, the more you like this video, the more you share this video, the more money we can raise for the victims down there. So if you're watching, smash that like button, and uh, we'll get this video out there for the people in need. Today's route, uh, Domino Zito, I'm sorry, let me, oh, I just closed my sky vector. Let me um, pull it up. I'll paste it in the chat if you guys want to check out the route of flight that we're taking down there. I didn't, I don't have, uh, what's it called, apps or anything going today, so here's the route of flight, guys, if you wanted to check it out. Disconnect the hand signals out front. Let's go ahead and get these engines burning. Crank it over. There's 40 PSI. Let's go ahead and start engine one. BSS, talk to me. Disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal will be on the right. We'll see you next time and have a great flight. Mm -hmm. Man, that sounds good. Listen to that hum. Fifth Freedom also asked, is this still a Matavia mod? Yes, it is. Sounds like we've got a good start on number one. Let's go over ahead and fire up engine number two. We'll listen to the startup sound from behind the wing. Rigger M, are Boeing bros welcome here, or should I just go? Rigger M, of course they're welcome here, man. I don't have anything against Boeing, and if you guys have been a part of the stream, you know my favorite aircraft is actually a Boeing, it's a 727, so uh, nothing against Boeing. I'm not a huge fan of the Max, but I don't think anybody is. But you're more than welcome to stay here, Rigger, I'm glad to have you. Maybe I'll convince you to find some Airbus. Alright, it sounds like we have two good starts, let's go ahead and go normal flaps one. I accidentally bumped it twice, but I put it back up to one. So we got flaps one. We have a good start on both engines. A little bit rusty. Here we go. That comes off. That comes off. Let's run an after start checklist. After start checklist. Engine and ice is off. Yellow electric pump is off. A rudder trim is zero. After start checklist complete. We're going to taxi straight ahead. And somebody wanted to see the browser in the EFB. Let me show you how I typically use. The Flight Factor browser when I'm flying in the United States here. I'll pull up a chart, so I'm going to go browse by state, and we are in Florida. Let me try to zoom in so you guys can get a better idea of how this browser works. Florida, and then I'm going to come down to Jacksonville, and then what I can do here is I can actually download the PDF right to my iPad, so now I have a free chart, and we are good to go. So, I we just came off of the South Cargo ramp here, ramp 2. We're going to taxi out southbound. Ooh, it's actually runway 3-2. We have to do a runway change. And we could go all the way down to 1-4. Let's just go down to 1-4 like we have it. We'll do a log taxi. 
We're going to take Sierra and I believe, what is that, Zulu? Oh no, that's November, so we'll align on it. We're going to take Sierra, November, down to 1 4, blast off. It's only a 7,700 foot runway, but we should uh, should be okay if we do a tow there. So, brakes released, taxi light is on, and we're going to get rammed by the fuel truck. Oh, thank you for turning. Give me anxiety. Let's get out of here. Fully loaded with relief supplies. Looking good. Looking good. Love that livery, courtesy of my good friend Jungly. He's linked in the description below. As well as gives me notice, I've got some new sounds. I've got new subscription sounds and donation sounds. Those all come from my good friend Piano Maniac 14. He's also linked in the description if you want to check out some of his work. Hell Schwartzberg, isn't this cockpit color quite uh, inaccurate? I was in a 320 copy once it was much darker. Um, Pell, yeah, it's it kind of depends. I mean, I don't think it's terribly inaccurate. There's kind of got that light blue tone to it. This is the Matavia mod, so it kind of adjusts things. You can do this light blue, or you can do a dark gray. I think I actually like the grayish textures better, and I think I loaded the blue textures here. Um, my mistake, and I should put the grayish ones back in, but it's not terribly inaccurate. It kind of depends on how dirty and how old the airplanes are as well, so. All right, here comes November. We're going to make a right turn. Dougal. Hi, guys. Hope you're all good. Dougal, glad to have you in the house, bud. Good to see you here. Thanks for your donation earlier, too. Ed Reed says, if you want simp, we could use a banner for this dono stream to avoid confusion. We could use a dono... So you can use a dono or a banner. And by banner, what do you mean? I, I thought I have a banner up on the top right. Do I need to... I can adjust the text in that banner if you'd like. Thank you, Cosmic, for the periodic reminder. All right, let's go ahead and do a flight control check. Full up, full down, neutral. Left, full right, neutral, rudder, full left, full right, neutral. And your auto brakes max, take off config, whether it be the can come on, auto, T A R A, cabin crew is advised, we gotta come to this stupid yes, sir. fat panel and get cabin ready. So, we'll do it from uh, the first officers. Sometimes that happens. Oh, no. There we go. Cabin ready. I hate that. It, I'm not a flight attendant. I don't need to be... I don't need a fat panel up here in front of me. Let's get on the center line. Quinn Johnson says, I wish I knew about this amazing Red Cross donation by family and we just sent our donation this weekend. Awesome, Quentin Johnson. I'm glad they're going to get it. I'm, they're going to appreciate it just as much as they would here. The only reason I'm, I'm doing it this way is uh, we get more, you get more bang for your buck, right? So I was saying earlier, $1 from you guys matched by my company is going to be $2. And that's, that's a big difference. So um, it'll be good. It'll be good. I was really happy I got the email from our company that sent it out. Really, if we actually had a couple pilots and I believe a flight attendant that had family down there uh, and were actually pretty uh, negatively affected by Dorian, so there's still a mess. I didn't even think to check, guys, is the length of Marsh Harbor's runway. We may have to go at a lower altitude to burn more gas to see what our landing weight is. What do we got? Yeah, we're planning a landing with 6.5. It's a lot of gas. But yeah, 
have to be fuel and it will just fly lower and burn more. Mystic Rebel says, I know we're not there yet. Um, so I know we're not there yet. Just want to ask a question. When do you pull back on the throttle during a full auto landing? So on a full auto land, uh, it would be when the aircraft says retard. So when it asks you to retard the throttle, the throttles come right back to the retard position or idle position. And that disengages them and the aircraft is set down. And the auto land is pretty smooth in real life and actually... XP or X-Play 1972 did an auto land the other day in the, the Tolis 319 and it was uh, really smooth too. So pretty good simulation of the auto land. Alright, here comes our left turn to Lima for runway 14. And Jack's Tower, Relief 91, ready to take off at 14. So I've done some axis work on my rudder pedals, and it's negatively affected by 320. All right, we're clear for takeoff. One four. Let's go ahead and get the lights on. Oh wait, one four. We're gonna make a big boy airplane turn here. We're gonna do a performance takeoff. Ooh, wow. That's pretty terrible. Alright, we are lined up. This is only 7700 feet long, too, so we don't want to mess around. Donation. Donation. Donation coming in. Rand Cool donated $10. Thanks for your hard work and dedication. Thank you, Rand Cool. The people of the Bahamas are greatly going to appreciate that. All right, we are lined up. Pull them up 50%. Nose forward on the six. I'm actually going to hold all of the brakes here for a minute. There's 50%. Release the brakes. Toga. Man Toga SRS. Auto thrust is blue. so much, uh, Darren Allen, for his kind words, and the people of the Bahamas are greatly going to appreciate that donation. Thank you. Glad you're enjoying the content of this channel as well. There we go. There's our fourth boy, Jacksonville. So it's kind of ironic, I was saying, you know, Jacksonville was supposed to be hit pretty hard. But uh, it's escaped. Smith says, I'll send the link to the flight deck to sim service, see if I can get some people in here. Awesome, Daniel Smith. Appreciate it, man. Ox stuff says, this sounds amazing with headphones. Thank you. I agree, too. This is the BSS sound pack for the Flight Factor 320. It sounds amazing with headphones and speakers. You know, the clouds here were about 15C or 10C, so we're plenty good. 
Now it says, would it make a difference for you to fly 330, 340? Uh, the 330 is, I mean, actually both of them are pretty much the same cockpit, except obviously the 340 is got uh, two engines. But, thanks for the subscribe, Kiabi16. I have not typed in the 330, 340, so I cannot answer that. <laughs> Clinton John says, do you used to fly for Cactus? I've noted to fly a lot of U.S. Airways. I don't know, Clinton Johnson, you tell me. <laughs> Alberto Delgadio in the house. What's up, Alberto? The crawl, I mean. It was show for a true donor for today's efforts. Ed Reed, do you know what? If I were more uh, versed in, in what you were asking me to do, I would do it. I'm, I'm a little bit so, you want me to do like a scrolling banner, I guess, of the, of the ooh, that could be a good idea. Is that what you're talking about? Alright, speed off star, 9 for 10. Let's go ahead and continue up. 2, 3, 5, 0. Manage climb. We're going through 10,000. Let's go ahead and get these lights off. The light comes off. Being in the flight attendants, I don't know, we're going through 10,000. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Alright, we are well on our way, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hop over here. Smith says, isn't the flight control check part of the taxi check? Because that's a European thing. That's a European thing, Daniel Smith. We can do them on the taxi out. It doesn't matter. As long as we get it done before takeoff. Uh, River M says, according to Google, Maya has 6,100 feet of runway. Okay, that's, a, that's getting pretty short there. Um, crunch some runway numbers. We may have to, uh, I'm going to adjust our cruise altitude, guys, because we have a lot of excess fuel. So I'm going to go here to my perf and next phase cruise. Yeah, let's go ahead and change this. Let's change our cruise altitude to uh, 280. We're going to adjust this to 280. That way we burn a little bit more fuel. Let's see what we've got here. We can update 6.7. Maybe. We'll see. Hopefully that'll burn some more gas if we stay at 28. And uh, we're going to get down. We may actually have to crash to crunch some um, landing performance numbers. Maybe Phantom 320 can do it for us. If I hear us. So, uh, oh, and Phantom, if you're still here, I, was, I didn't know you were actually in school for air traffic control. Do you, I was going to ask you, do you know uh, what center, how does it work after school when you're an air traffic controller? Do you know like, where do you get so, I've always been curious about that. Dale Smith says, uh, usually I just take the taxi check on the 737 and do it as part of the taxi. Yeah, and Daniel Smith, it may be different on the 737. I don't know the procedures on the 737, so there may be something where Boeing wants you to check the flight just before actually doing it. Uh, but as far as Airbus goes, we do it on the taxi out all the time. Especially when you push into a, uh, a tight alley, somewhere busy, LaGuardia. JFK, Chicago, you just start up one engine and get out of there, you know, and then we do the rest of our checks on the way out so we're not clogging up the alleyway for you later. Miss, uh, Mr. Rimmel, I saw a real life video of a pilot pulling back on the throttle after the main crew touched down with the engine reverse and then disengaged the other part. Well, then that's not necessarily correct if he's doing that. Because when the Airbus tells you to retard, it's a command. It's not a, like, oh, you should think about retarding. Technically, at that point, the aircraft has calculated it needs to be an idle thrust. And if you slowly retract the, auto, the thrust levers, nothing is going to change until you actually reach zero. Because the auto thrust range is active from just above idle, which is right here, to the flex detent. So if you're on auto, if you're on approach, like it would be right here with the climb detent, and it says retard, and you slowly retract these thrust levers, that does absolutely nothing. The FADEC is going to keep the N1, or it's going to keep the engine at that current setting until you actually reach Retard. zero. So when you hit, when it says retard, just if you just slam them back to zero, it's it's what it's anticipating you to do because it, at that point it's telling you I don't want any more thrust. I need the auto thrust disengaged. Now, if you really want to try to buddy your landing or something, and you may extend that 
auto thrust lever just a little bit, you know, and you just retard, retard. Sometimes that can help you get a little smoother landing, but you can also get into trouble that way because the aircraft is in speed mode, and pretty soon it gets it'll start increasing more and more thrust, and then before you know it, you're floating way down the runway, and you have a long landing. So, by definition in the book, when it says retard, the thrust levers are supposed to run to retard because that actually disengages the auto thrust. Thanks for the subscription there, Seneca James TM. Glad to have you here. Spitfire RF 100. Hello V1. How's it going? It's going up to great, Spitfire. Glad to have you. Now, if we have any new viewers in here, I'm just going to get it off over the time. I want you guys to be aware that this this stream is all of donations for Red Cross Relief. My company is offering a. 100% match on donations, so that's why the super best way to donate if you want to help is through the Streamlabs link located in the description, because that way Retard. I will be able to get the funds directly from PayPal and they will go straight to my company's donation portal within one bank process a day or whatever it takes. If you don't have PayPal or can't donate that way, you can do Super Chat, but just as a word of caution, YouTube does take quite a bit of that in Super Chat. Uh, chunk from you, and also I will not be able to get access to those funds for about you know, a month or so coming out the middle of the next month uh, for any super chat donations. So that's why I wanted it. the preferred method of, of support is through the donation link. Those funds will be directly sent over to the customer. And the best part about it is that 100% match. So $10 donation is now $20. And that's, that's a significant move. So that's why we're doing the stream today, guys. People down there still need help, even though it's not on the news. No one's talking about it anymore. But um, the fact of the matter is it's still going on. They're still going to have to rebuild. So there's 18,000 set standard. Standard is set one, two, and three times. There we go. Let's take a look outside. Let's see a little bit. Going right down the Florida coastline. And that looks good. This is the Flight Factor 320 with the Batavia mod. Inside engine sounds are overpowering your voice a little bit. Let me adjust those. Let me pull them down. Let me boost my voice a tad. All right. Oh, that's loud. How about now? I, I hate it when Streamlabs decides to update and wipe all that stuff. So should be better now, I think. Let me know. Fifth Freedom Simulation says, V1, I was almost certain you were going to take the 752 out of the hangar for this. Their Freedom version is money. You know what? Uh, can I, I'm still going to call you Dimitri, man. Or I guess I won't. I'm Fifth Freedom Simulations. Or FFS. Um, <laughs> he's been around the channel for a while, guys. So, it's very funny you say that because I actually was thinking about taking the 757 up to the point where I actually loaded it up and I was like, hmm. And then I said, you know what? I wonder if all my followers are getting tired of the of the Boeing stuff on the Airbus and instead of seeing Airbus. So I said, all right, I'll fly one more Airbus, and uh, that's where we're at. But I do love that 75. I did get it. I did a few flights with it already, and it's pretty pretty good. The stream just froze for anybody. All right, I hope it's back. I did get a, I don't know what's going on with my bandwidth there. It looked like there was a hardcore buffer or something. I'm not sure what that was. Hopefully it's recovering 
hope we're covering for you guys. I hope you have a decent quality. Let me know what the quality looks like for you. Bye, bye. I don't know why. So when I get updates, I mean, I always try to pause them because whenever there's updates, things just get messed up. It feels like everything gets messed up. All right, here we go. We do have weather radar in the flight factor. We're not painting anything right now. Let's go ahead and tilt it down about 1.5-ish. 2.0, that's a little steep. Let's do 1.0. We can ride from up front. I don't know. Do you guys? What do you guys think about this view? Do you guys like this view up here in the cockpit? I often find myself when I'm flying in real life is I'll cross my arms up here and just stare right off the nose. Quint Johnson says, "I think you did fly you for U.S. Airways, if I remember correctly, either today or in the last video I was watching, and you were saying you had to commute to work in Philadelphia." I don't know, Quint Johnson. I will neither confirm nor deny. Phantom320 says, V1 Sim, I cheated because my wife is a controller, so I get to utilize the spousal accommodation in the contract, which keeps me close to her facility. Oh. But typically you get a list and based on your score out of academy you choose from. Oh, okay. Awesome. Well, that's cool. You get to, to stick with your spouse. Did you ever fly? I know you were a, a commercial pilot for a while. Did you ever fly in her airspace, or did you guys ever talk to each other? I always thought that would be really cool to a data controller and be flying through. I was like, hey, did you get your, like, did you get your lunch, honey? Yep, contact departure or something like that. I always thought that'd be kind of cool. Cosmic Doubloon asks, V1 of all the airports you've been to in real life, what's your favorite approach and why? Ugh. Well, the St. Martin approach is, is not challenging by any means, but it's a heck of a lot of fun. Um, because you go down into St. Martin and you, you know you got Buzz the Beach, um, so that's up there on the list, I guess. No, I gotta think about that one. The river visual into Washington D.C., which we did on the was it the 3K substream? That's a lot of fun, following the river down. I do love doing that one. Uh, man, there's some beautiful ones up north too. I'll have to think on that one and, and come back to you. You know, going into Bogota, Colombia is uh, <laughs> it's kind of kind of cool too. Wow, we just hit some turbulence there. I think we just hit a very hard pocket of turbulence, but we're okay. Everything seems to be just fine. We are still climbing out. Twenty six for twenty eight. Might be some leftover ripples from Dorian. That Fork Boy Florida looks good. All right, hey, you said it was hard for me to hear, but you can hear me now. All right, good. <laughs> I hope it's better now, guys. I hope the, the volume is better now. Man, we're just getting rocked, though. Look at the turbulence and everything. All right. <laughs> Everyone says much better on the volume. Okay, good. All right. Felix5, hello V1. Hope all is well. Do you plan to fly the 757 streams or tutorials? Absolutely, Felix5. I <laughs> I wanted to fly the 75 cargo down to the Bahamas on this stream. I really did. I was set up for it. Um, but I just, I don't know. I don't know if it's, maybe it's just me self-inflicting my own my own self-conscious about you guys wanting to see Airbus because I, I have this per persona in my head I guess that everyone wants to see Airbus on this channel so it's harder for me to fly something that's not Airbus even though I may want to fly the Boeing but we're definitely going to do some streams with it um, I don't know if, if you guys are new to the channel you probably know that I have pre-ordered the honeycomb yoke hopefully it'll be coming uh, to my house here sometime soon and I'm really going to enjoy flying some of the Boeings around with the honeycomb yoke. So my last joystick was the X-50, uh, no, the, the Pro Flight yoke, the Satec Pro Flight yoke. And unfortunately, it, it stopped working quite a while ago. So I've just been using my Warthog and my VKB is kind of a combination 
when I fly, but uh, definitely need to get that yoke back for the Boeings. But you're going to see some 757 flying. I don't have any time in a 757, but I did fly the 757 simulator for, I think I did, was it two landings? I did two laps around the pattern visual. I had a, a good friend of mine that was a type reading instructor, and he I'd, I'd, he'd invite me to go down to, we actually were in the U.S. Airways sim in Phoenix, and, you know, I, I got to observe the, the, he was training a crew on being typed, and then they had some extra time, and he said, hey, why don't you take it for a lap around the pattern or two? So I took it around for two laps, and the traffic pattern, uh, that's about the only extent I have in the 757, but it was a lot of fun, and the 75 is, is up there with some of my top Boeing planes with the 727. I do love the look, and feel of a 757 just the power of those engines great airplane tech aviator what's up v1 where are you going to and where from tech we are going from jacksonville florida down to marsh harbor full of relief supplies for the people in need bkg greetings everybody Greetings to you, BKG. Gavin Botwinick asks, what is the fastest way to become an airline pilot? Gavin, if you're in the United States, probably to pick a flight school that has a pathway program of some sort so that as soon as you are done with your commercial ratings and your flight, if whatever they require you to get a, a flight instructor certificate in a certain amount of time, and then you go straight to the right seat of a CRJ or some kind of regional jet. That would probably be your fastest track to becoming an airline pilot right now. Donation, Donation. Donation coming in, Slam Cannon donated $20 bones to the people of the Bahamas. It says, thanks for taking your time to help us get better at what we all love doing, flying. Slam Cannon, thank you so much for your support. The people of the Bahamas will greatly appreciate that donation. So, yeah, Gavin, the fastest way is to find some kind of flight school that will allow you to have a career track to an airline. Preferably an airline of your choosing. You know, you want to go somewhere you want to go, but um, that would probably be the fastest way to do it. Let's come up here to our first class cabin where we got some of our doctors on board. Let's take a look out from over here. Ooh, yeah, I like the looks of that. That's actually, I believe that's Cape Canaveral, right? Where they launched the space shuttle. So that's kind of the reason why we didn't go direct to Marsh Harbor because this is all restricted. So we came down the coastline here, and then we're going to cut across. Rigger M, out of curiosity, how many PIC hours did you have before getting hired at a major U.S. airline? It seems a huge amount compared to UK. Yeah, uh, I had over 2,000. So as far as I am aware now, it's so you can get your commercial rating and then airlines require an ATP or an airline transport pilot license, and that's even at the regional level, and that's 1,500 hours of total time. Now, I don't know what the PIC requirements are anymore. But there used to be, you know, 1,000 hours PIC turbine or just 1,000 PIC. I, I'm sorry, but I have just kind of, I've, that knowledge has gone past out of my brain. Um, but about 1,500, and then you can, you're at least eligible for a minimum ATP license. Now, there's some schools that you can go to where you can get, I believe, a restricted ATP. I don't even know if that's even allowed anymore. Maybe you guys know, but um, at one point they had restricted ATP licenses where you could have a less than 1,500, but you could only sit right seat and you had to do a couple other things, and then you could get the, the restriction removed. But generally speaking, if you want to be competitive for a major carrier, not a regional, you're going to need in the realm between two and 3,000 hours of flight time and, and probably a thousand hours PIC turbine time to be at least in the conversation for competitive. Martin Skolov says cheers from Copenhagen. Thank you for your awesome streams and thank you Martin. Glad to have you here. Phantom says I have flown and talked to you before. That's pretty cool man. That's pretty cool. Cosmic Doubloon coming in with that periodic reminder. Donate, please, to, through the Streamlab links. That's correct. 
Fork Boy Review states, this is Fork Boy. Avio, man, this is Fork Boy. <laughs> Jawuku, have you ever flown an approach into Ton Cotton in the Honduras? No, I have not done that in real life. I've done it in the sim many times, just because I think it'd be fun to, it's fun to challenge myself. Um, I can, I can imagine it would, it's very challenging when you go down there. I don't even know, I know there's, uh, American used to run 757s down there quite a bit. I'm not sure what goes down there anymore. Marco Nasty, a V1 Sim. I'm a 737FO, but next week I have a Sim assessment for a job in the 320. Any tips you'd give to a Boeing driver? Ooh, Marco. Uh, well, probably the only tip that I can give you is forget everything you know about VNAV. <laughs> because it's completely different in the Airbus than the Boeing, which I'm sure you're aware of by now. Um, and I guess the only other tip I would say is less is more, right? Just... Put in a control input because you're going to be coming from the Boeing where you're all hands-on. Uh, less is more. So put in a control input and let go of the stick. And that's it. And actually, I fly, you know, with only a few fingers. I don't fully grab the entire stick here with my hand because you get a tendency to over-control it, especially if you... I don't know what kind of assessment you have to do if you have to do any single-engine stuff, but if you're doing single engine stuff it's very easy to begin over controlling the aircraft with your hand so i always set up my armrest to have my arm completely supported and the only thing that's not supported is my wrist and then i put you know four three four fingers on the stick itself to have that real precise control now of course if you have somebody flying that's you know a pilot your pilot monitoring somebody else is flying you want to have your hand over the takeover push button uh, during any critical phase of flight in case uh, they get a little behind and you need to take over control. So you, that's what that little red push button will do. All right, let's see where we are here. We are just about to make the turn a westbound and then we're going to be 209, we're 209 miles from the Marsh Harbor itself. We've got a lot of gas on board, guys. I hope we can be able to stop down there. We're going to have to do f a short field landing. All right, so after ZFP, I don't have a fix because I have loaded the RNAV to runway niner. Which I think it starts at Honey? Let's see, where does it start at? No, it starts at root P, so there's root P. Oh, well, must, that must be a missed. Yeah, hold at Honix. That's the holding fix over there. All right, so it's pretty much straight in. So we can go direct from ZFP, but I'm going to leave that discontinuity in there just a little bit longer because I want to get the weather before we get rid of that because if we have to flip it around and land the other direction, I don't want to have to mess with that. So we'll get a little bit closer, and then we will check it out. Right now, our planned fueling board is 6.8. Our gross weight is 60.8. Uh, should be okay. Should be okay. That looks really nice right there. That looks really nice. Daniel Smith, do you think it's better how USATC communications are a bit more relaxed compared to the EU ones? Um, I don't know if it's better or worse. Uh, USATC can get, uh, they can get a little snippy at times. I'm not too familiar with how the European air traffic control system is. I mean, I've flown, I've only flown in EU airspace twice, and that was in and out of London City way long ago I was sitting right seat on a citation um, so I was just more jazzed at looking out the window I really wasn't paying I mean it sounds bad I, I was paying attention but it was a lot for me I was really young in my career and I was really enjoying the whole moment um, but they are I mean they are strict and firm in Europe and they are pretty strict in the States too if you mess up but I don't know if it's either better or worse
All right. <laughs> Let's go to Korea, Coat Source. Yeah, I don't think we have the gas for Korea, uh, for Korea on this flight. We are going to go to e Europe, though. We're going to do a Europe tour. It's coming. That Orbix Innsbruck, man. Woo. Looks really nice. Can't wait to get my hands on that. Mr. Grebel says, but would you recommend spending a lot for the fast track to the right seat or take the longer route? Europe has some nice cadet programs right now for the 320-321, but costs 110 grand. Um, hmm. I don't know. If you're in Europe, the... I, I'm unfamiliar with how their whole situation works for as far as flight trading and getting to a carrier. I know you need significantly less flight time to get hired on in uh, the European markets. Uh, NASA 6 would be the man to ask. He's in the V1 Discord. Uh, you could send him a P1 or, or a P1. You could send him a, a, a direct message, DM. Or he may be on the stream right now and may be able to answer your question. But he's going through training right now in Europe, in Spain, actually. So he is the guy to ask when it comes to European flight training and the most current situation that's happening over there. Because, I, unfortunately, I can't really answer that question accurately. Blue Max says, I'll be flying over where you live in a few minutes. <laughs> nice. Slim Cannon says, I've heard if you're close to 1,500 hours, some regional airlines will help you get your time, then hire you. Yep, I'm sure there's some regionals out, out there that will pick you up at 1,500. Just kind of depends on uh, where you want to be based at and everything. Daniel Smith says, I'm looking at going for a Ryanair-sponsored flight school. Well, hey, man, if that's where you want to be, um, then do it. If it's a... if if it's one of their, if it's anything like the United States where you have little tracks like that um, to get you to a certain airline, I mean, that's probably the best way to do it because you eliminate a lot of the middle, little lot of the middleman and, you know, trying to get interviews and things like that. Where if you already have a guaranteed slot, then boom, you just focus on flying and get it done. Right. That looks pretty good. Ed Reed says that V1 Sim Far 61160 is roughly 1500 hours. There you go. Here's your answer. BKG says Delta has service from Atlanta to Ton Cotton. Nice. I uh, I wonder what airframe they take down there. They take a seven five. I wonder what they take down there from Atlanta. Avio man asks, would you recommend Fork Boy or V States? I don't have any experience with the V-States, Avio Man. So, uh, personally, I've been using Fork Boy, and I love it. I love it. Um, one thing I noticed is I was having some severe performance issues, and I couldn't figure out why. I mean, I had I upgraded my system, but what had happened was when I was downloading and installing Fork Boy, some some of the packages come with multiple layers of of Ortho. So you could have a standard definition a HD or high definition of the same area and an X-Plane 10 version. And in some of the instances, I actually loaded up all three of them or a combination of them. So my system was loading several different layers of ortho and it was just bricking my performance. But I got that all fixed up. So been pretty much a performance issue free. All right, let's see where we are here. What do we got down there? This is not where we're landing, but let's see what the weather is for ZFP. This is uh, Freeport, I believe. Grand Bahama. Wind 090 at Niner, so that seems pretty good for landing on runway 9, even though we're landing at uh, 
Marsh Harbor, which is over here a little bit. So we're right down the airway. So if we're gonna we are gonna land on runway nine at Marsh Harbor. I have no idea what the uh, minimums are. Enter destination data. We're gonna do that right now. All right, so we are going to go from ZFP. I'm going to clear the discontinuity because we are going to go direct to root P. Insert that. Select heading track first, really? Why? Okay. Interesting. How about direct ZFP? Insert. Okay, that cleaned it up. I don't know what that was all about. All right, we are direct to ZFP. And then after ZFP, we are going to go straight into the RNAV to Runway Niner. So Route P is listed here at... There is no altitude constraint actually there, according to this. But I'm going to make one. I'm going to make it a 2300. Because that's what it shows there. Oh, that's a UTC constraint. I guess it won't let me put a uh, VNAV constraint on it. I'll make one. All right, so now I've made a dis uh, descent constraint at root P. And we can see our top of descent is, starts over here now. After root P, we're going to be on the RNAV all the way down to Runway Niner. Get another donation coming in. Greetings from Finland. Need to go to sleep for now because I have to catch early morning flight to Barcelona. Thanks for the great streams. I have learned a lot. Iggy77, thank you so much for that. Super Chat, $10 a year, or 10, excuse me, 10 a euro donation. The people of the Grand Bahamas will greatly appreciate that. I'm glad you're enjoying the content and thank you for your support. All right, so that looks good all the way down. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up setting up for the approach here. So we've got our flight plan is set. Nothing to hard tune on the RadNav page. Our progress page, we're going to do, I wonder if it's even in the, it's got to be in the database here. Miam 09er. Nope, it is not. Okay, how about the airport? Mike, Yankee. Alpha Mike. Okay, that works. It won't let us put the runway in, but that'll work for now. Performance data. We're going to descend a little bit slower than that. We're going to do a 7-8 descent at 310 knots. And the approach phase, we're going to get the environmentals and the weather in Grand Bahamas. Actually, that's a little bit of a homework for you guys. Can any of you pull up the... I'm sorry, not Grand Bahamas. Can one of you pull up the Marsh Harbor current weather? And we'll go ahead and put that in the box. Got a bunch of dispatchers at the at my fingertips. Might as well use them. All right, everything else looks good on the overhead panel. All right. Things are looking good. We are just about... What's our top of descent? seven miles so we're gonna actually start down here pretty soon let's go ahead and set 2300 and we are going to start our vnav path all the way down it's just about five miles prior and we'll go ahead and manage our descent we'll put our tcas into below mode and down we go Right. Hey, Captain, how are you? I'm doing just fine, JJ. How are you? Rigor M says, I think places like Ember Riddle give you $500 shortcut, but from what I've gathered, talking with people who went to Eru, it is useless, expensive, and not worth it. Rigor M, I hate to talk bad about Ember Riddle. I don't want to talk bad about them, but I will agree with you as someone who has went to Ember Riddle. There are other opportunities out there that will get you where you need to go for much cheaper. So, if you have another option, go for it. Ed Reed says, I graduated from Academics of Flight in Queens, New York. Awesome, Ed. 
Daniel Smith, have you ever taxied to the runway and had to taxi at, because of an active runway change? Yeah, absolutely. It happens uh, sometimes, not very frequently, but sometimes it'll happen. You'll taxi all the way down there. One time, actually departing Philadelphia in a snowstorm, we got our de-ice. We had to wait in line to get de-ice because it was snowing like crazy. And by the time we finished our de-ice, we only had a few minutes before we could, our time expired for our, uh, I forget what the, what is the, the not, basically you only have so much time after you've been de-iced until you can take off or else you have to get re-de-iced. So we only had a little bit of time. We went all the way down to the runway and they said, oh, we have to change the active runway now. We have to taxi to the other end. We taxied to the other end. We, our time expired. We had to go back to the de-ice pad. We went back to the de-ice pad, got de-iced again taxied out to the new runway that they just changed to and then our, we were below our minimum fuel for takeoff so that we had to taxi to the gate get more fuel and then we timed out as a flight crew so yeah. <laughs> that uh it does happen can you sometime fly to prague czech republic i don't see why not simone i don't see why not i think we can do that you live in austria nice bkg says you believe it is 757 that goes down to uh uh, Ton Khan. That's pretty cool. Maybe we could do a 757 stream down to uh, Ton Khan, Honduras. I haven't even looked in X-Plane. Is there... I know there was some FSX scenery. Is there a good X-Plane 11 scenery for Ton Khan? That might be something worth checking out. We could do a 757 flight down, down there. <laughs> Grammar 100 in my last two messages. Yep. night daniel smith have a good one you're signing off mike h does it make you nervous flying into the bermuda triangle no mike uh i'm not nervous to fly in the bermuda triangle that those uh all the myths and legends have been debunked um pretty much it's a I, from what i understand it's a gas that's released from the sea floor that can cause issues but uh it's pretty much all legend now Hmm. American United takes 319s down there. That would make sense. Delta takes some 73s. I know Delta takes a 73 into Key West, which is a very short runway as well. There's some of the Bahamas down there. A few little islands. BKG says, now that GPS is so, uh, is so commonplace, I don't think there is... Anything to fear in the Mute Triangle. Well, yeah, you're right. Nothing to fear in the Bermuda. Dex says it's 29C and uh, sunny. Oh, we got a couple of Mitars coming in. I appreciate that, guys. Let's go ahead and finish our approach preparation here. Looks like we have 3009er on the altimeter. 100 at 12 on the wind. So we're definitely going to land on runway 9. We're going to need every knot of wind. Whoa. Really? Format air. I can't put 12 in the... I was going to say, I must have mistyped. I was like, you can't put 12. And the temperature is 29C. All right, thanks for the uh, METAR information, guys. We're going to do a 400-foot MDA. And we are pretty much set up. Let's take a look at our descent here. We are 21.8. We look like we are on the VNAV path down to 2300 for the start of the approach. It's an RNAV approach starting at a root piece. Looking good. Looking good. There's some uh, more Grand Bahamas. Let's see, where are we over right now? We are actually over... Oh, that is uh, MYGM, Grand Bahama. Yes, it is. So that is Grand Bahama right there. We are not going into Grand Bahama. We're going to test our luck at Marsh Harbor. Couldn't find any good Marsh Harbor scenery, so we're just going to use the default, which it didn't... I actually went in there. I just looked around in, it, in the Nimbus Huey, actually, before the stream to see what it looked like. It, it's not a terrible free, free airport that comes with X-Plane.
Avi Man says, thanks. I went to Epic Flight Academy in Phoenix East. I know about that one. Got a lot of kids coming in saying that ERAU was too expensive. Avi Man, absolutely. So I actually trained at Deer Valley in Phoenix. I was a West Wind aviation student and instructor. Um, I came from Embry-Riddle. I did my first year at Riddle, and I did my private pilot license at Embry-Riddle. And for the price of my private pilot license, I got my instrument and commercial rating and my commercial instrument, all for the same price that I paid to get my private license at Embry-Riddle. So that should tell you the cost. Periodic reminder, thank you, Cosmic. Yeah, guys, this says we're getting towards the end of the stream here, so I'll make it known one more time. This stream is intended to support the people in need in the Bahamas. All support and donations are going to go from the donation link in the description straight through my company's portal. I'm going to take all the donations. Going to, I'm going to donate it through my company's portal. They've set up a donation for all their employees, pilots, flight attendants, etc., and they will match every dollar of the donation. So whatever we have in donations, they're going to match that exactly. So we basically double our donation co or donation money, and it's going to be straight over to Red Cross and for the, the victims of Hurricane Dorian. Now, if you have if you don't have PayPal and you had to use Super Chat, that's not a problem. The only thing that I want full disclosure is YouTube does take a significant chunk of all Super Chat donations, and I will actually not have funds to those donations for about a month from now. So I don't know if my donation window will still be open at the company that, I, that I'm working for. So, but if they're not open, if they're not accepting the 100% match, I will still donate those funds uh, into Red Cross myself, at just a straight donation. So no matter how you donate, it'll still get there. But the preferred method of donation is through the Streamlabs link, which will be sent over uh, than one banking day for PayPal. All right, so we are at 15.4. We need to set our altimeters, 3009. 3009 on the altimeter. And we're getting a little bit high on profile. Let's go ahead and get some half speed brakes out. Help us get down here. We gotta slow it down a little bit. I love the BSS sound pack. I cannot wait for the BSS pack to be released on the tow list. I will be hard pressed to fly another airplane when the sound pack for TOLUS comes out. Especially if they update their FMGC, the 1.4 update that TOLUS is working on. Oh man, it might take the Airbus community by storm. <laughs> Fifth Freedom Simulations, right on cue. Cap K, Flight Factor 320 or TOLUS 319? I think I just answered it for you. <laughs> right on cue. Beating the odds, have you compared the Flight Factor 320 and Tholus 319 during a night flight? Like how the external light interacts with the aircraft and how it looks and how it... Do you know what? Beating the odds? I have not. That's actually a very good thing to check out. I'm actually curious for myself. Maybe I will do a, a quick video on that, just comparing night lighting and how it in interacts with the environment. Good point. Thanks for uh, bringing that up. If you want, go ahead and if you're a member of our Discord, it, the link is also in the description, um, post that in, I believe it's the Airbus hangar, Airbus terminal, and I'll pin that message. And what I do is when you guys come up with great ideas of videos you want to see, um, I pin the messages so then when I'm looking to create content, I would just go and look at my pin messages and see what you guys are requesting because I want this channel to be all about content that you want to see. If you have questions, I want to answer them. If you have video suggestions that I think are be worthy of making a video on, um, then I'll absolutely do it. And not that I don't think anything is worthy of making a video on, but some things I can are easier answered in an explanation rather than making the whole video on it. So, um, but yeah, post it in the uh, Airbus terminal and any suggestions that you guys have or things you want to see, that's where you should post it. I will pin the message and hopefully we'll get uh, some video out there. All right, we're 11 sending, getting ready to go through 10,000 feet. Let's go ahead and turn our seatbelt signs on. Let's get our uh, lights on here. We're gonna just go straight to take off on the nose light. I say it over and over. If you're with ATC, our procedure, my reminder personally, is you know cleared approach. We go to the taxi, clear to land. I put it in takeoff. But since we have no ATC today, we're just gonna go straight to the takeoff position on the taxi light. 
the overhead is set, our cabin is depressurizing. Let's go ahead and just take a quick look through here. Everything looks good. Electrical page, our hydraulics are fine. Plenty of gas, we've got a lot of gas. I'm concerned about our landing performance actually. Our doors look good. Wheels are nice and cool, so we're gonna smoke them when we get on the ground. And that is that. We're gonna clear that. We're gonna plan on a medium auto brake landing. Flaps full, full reverse. And we're at a 10-3 descending to 2300. Donation a dropping in BKG just tipped eight dollars a US appreciated BKG. Thank you for the support. The peoples uh peoples, the people of the Bahamas will greatly appreciate that. And like I said, guys, a little bit goes a long way because everything that's donated is gonna be matched. So technically that's a sixteen dollar donation. That's that's incredible. So um, we're gonna make a difference, we're gonna help these people out down there. All right, 9.4 descending 2300. Slam Cannon says, waiting on a good Raleigh-Durham scenery. Me too, man. You and me both. I love Raleigh-Durham. That's actually one of my favorite airports. I love Raleigh-Durham. It's a great airport. The terminal is fantastic. It's got good restaurants. It's clean. Really good. I love Raleigh-Durham. All right. Fifth Freedom Simulation says, V1 Sim, what's all that going on down there? Do you have a secondary flight plan in the box? What's that all going on down there? Where's that? Uh, I don't have a secondary. I can copy the active, which we would do in a case like this, but uh, nope, that's just our RNAV approach that we have set up. So we've got Rude P, which looks like we're going to be high, even though we told it to descend, so we're going to have to get on that. We have to get on this descent. Just a yard nav approach. This is a holding fix of Honix over there. So let's go ahead and get some air brakes out so we can get down. It says we're high. Now it says we're... So this orange here, when you have an orange fix, that means you're not meeting the restriction. So let's take a look here. It shows us 10 feet high. When I come to flight plan, it shows us crossing root P at 2300. Okay, so now we're back on the path. All right. I guess we're not high anymore. And the pink magenta dot there is our desail point. What we can do is actually go ahead and activate and confirm. So I'm going to pull for selected speed. 240 is good for now. Let's go ahead, activate, confirm the approach phase. There's our vertical deviation needle, guys. I popped these windows out because I think it's easier for you to see. There's our vertical deviation. We're looking for a brick and the stick. Our stick is this, decel or is this uh, descend arrow right here. And this is our brick. I'm gonna go ahead and continue reducing speed to 210 knots now manually. I could hear the engine spooling up there, but we wanted to come back down. So this is gonna be a tight approach. I think it's only 6,700 feet long or along those lines. Oh, Daniel Smith says goodbye. I was, I was saying goodbye to who was leaving. All right, good. Well, I'm glad to have you here, Daniel Smith. We're gonna have a nice landing, I hope. I cannot, I mean, I never can, I can't guarantee greasers on any of them anymore. I just, I don't know what it is. I find my, I don't know if the landing calculator is just not as accurate as I'd like it to be, or maybe I'm just smashing them down on the sim, but um, the Airbuses are difficult to get a nice uh, smooth butter on uh, in the sim. But this one, I'm not even going to attempt to get a butter. I'm aiming for a textbook touchdown short field. We may even try to put it down on the numbers. We might do a full short field, try to drop it down right on the numbers, max braking, full reverse, and uh, get off in time, because we definitely don't want to go off the end of the runway. So we're VFE next minus 10. Let's go ahead and extend flaps a one. Slats are coming out. Casper324 says, hey V1, pretty new to your channel, but absolutely loving the content. Appreciate your passion for aviation. Love how excited you get when you catch a cool exterior view or a sweet glimpse of scenery. Thank you, Casper. Absolutely, man. I'm definitely passionate about aviation um, and flying all kinds of airplanes. So I'm glad you're enjoying the content. Glad to have you here. That is why I'm doing this. Captain Geo says, hey, Cap, we as Healy fans waiting for that landing instructor. <laughs> How's the little one? Captain Geo, well, as far as the landing instructor goes for landing helicopter, uh, 
I might make a video here pretty soon on it, hopefully. It is a beast to tame. That Huey is definitely a beast that needs taming. Uh, as far as the little one, she is doing fantastic, Geo. She's actually, she's five weeks old now. Well, six weeks old tomorrow. And we've had five nights in a row now where she has slept the entire night from 9 to about 6 a.m. So, completely happy about that. The wife is very happy about that. <laughs> Thanks for asking, Jill. All right, I can almost see the airport out there in front of us here. I'm going to continue reducing speed to 180. We are... Uh, actually, let's do 200. We are pretty high here. We need to get down. We're supposed to be at 2,300 feet at uh, Rude P. I guess we can always do a go-around, right? You guys haven't seen a go-around yet. I think we'll be all right. I'm actually going to disengage the autopilot. That way we can get full speed break. Donation, Donation coming Donation. in, Dudley Brook. Appreciate the $10, man. The people of the Bahamas will greatly appreciate that. All right, we've got our altitude back. Let's go 180 on the speed. 2300, let's go ahead and arm the box. Thank you so much for that donation, uh, Dudley Brook. Going straight to the people of the Bahamas. All right, maybe we won't capture it on time. Turn it back off. Let's go back to full speed brakes. We're a little bit high there, Rude P. I'm going to spin that down to 1600. And clear approach. Final lap. There it is. All right, so we're now we're below the. Uh, path, but that's okay. Don't want to climb. We'll just level it off here. I don't know why it's asking me to climb. We saved it. I can see the runway ahead. Here comes our vertical deviation brick. Just like any approach, I always tell you guys in the Airbus, 2,000 feet, 180 knots, flaps two. Here comes flaps two. You will be stable on any approach you do. If you are 2,000 feet above touchdown at 180 knots with flaps configuration two, you will be on point every time. And tell the Airbus wants to do that and then increase thrust. I don't know why. <laughs> Sometimes she does funny things. All right, we'll get back down on the stick here. Let's go ahead and uh, manage speed. We're approaching 2,000 feet above touchdown right about now. Gear's coming down. Arm the speed brakes. Down to land, clear to land. Speed is coming back. We'll set a safe go around altitude of 3,000 feet. VFE next minus 10, flaps 3. And a VFE next minus 10, flaps full. Let's do it from back here. Oh, yeah. I love that look right there when the flaps drop down to full. Mm. All right, fly the airplane. Runway's in sight, two whites, two reds. Vertical deviation, we're on the brick. Slightly high on the brick. Ten knots right down the runway, that'll help us out in our stopping distance. One thousand. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and turn our flight directors off. We're gonna go for the bird on the flight director. We are visual with the runway now. We are two whites, two reds. I'm going to ride that down now. We may, we may lose the vertical deviation brick because I'm going to ride the 
uh, visual approach now I'm actually going to correct. You can see this approach is a little bit off center. So I'm going to go ahead and manually correct the aircraft now to get on the center line. The vertical deviation is going to get above us as we go below the vertical deviation path. As long as we're still showing two whites, two reds, we're okay. This is a short runway, guys. We're going to drag it. We're going to come in with three reds on this one. I want three reds, one white. We're going to try to plop her down right on those numbers or close to it. 300. I really hope we can stop. <laughs> I'm having second doubts about stopping at Ooh. this point. There's four reds because I'm scared. There's four reds, one white. We clear the trees. 100. Okay, now we're going to come down. We're going to drop this puppy. No 50 feet over threshold. We're going for like 40, 10 feet above 30, the threshold. 20. Retard. Retard. Spoilers. A reverser. Green. You were fired. 438. That's all right. I would sure be fired if I went off the end of the runway. Manual braking. Woo! All right, well, let's look at the Gs. 1.9, yeah, that's hard. What'd I say, though? 10 feet above threshold? We are 13 foot. All right. That was firm, but hey, that's the best part about flying relief supplies is you don't have to worry about passengers complaining. And who knows, maybe Ryanair will give me a call as soon as we get off the airplane. All right, here comes our apron here. This is tight. This is tight. Let's get these lights off. Let's get the APU fired up. And I believe we can go down to the right is where we want to go. Yeah, we're going to go right. Flaps are coming up. Fire up the APU. Whew. We are down, guys. If one of y'all have Ryanair's phone number, let me know, because I think I can add that landing to my resume. Alright, here comes a tight right turn. This is my V1 bird, though, so I hate, to, I hate slamming her down like that, but... think we can fit over there? Probably not. Let's see. I don't think we can fit over there. Hey, we'll just park it over here since we've got a little, uh... Oh, you know what? There's actually a hard stand over here. Come to the hard stand. <laughs> Rigger M says, you just had to pick on Ryan there, didn't you, Airbus man? Yeah, I'm not picking on him. I just think that they'd give me a job now, right? <laughs> Are they overstaffed? Yeah. You know, I don't even... Uh, I'm not even so sure how accurate any of the landing rate calculators are. I mean, I know that one was definitely firm, no doubt about it. But when you look at that one and then you look at Project Fly, it always shows something different. So I actually like to look at the G-loading. But even then, that G-loading was pretty firm. Pretty firm. Oh yeah, a little off-centered on the trucks there. Boom, like a professional. Even though I left the uh, taxi light on and my spoilers up the whole time. All right, let's go ahead and get the bleed on. Kill engine two. Kill engine one. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your support for Hurricane Dorian victims. We are spooling down in Marsh Harbor. Let's take a look at those replays. <laughs> All right. Let's go to our plugins. Enable, disable. We want to disable. I 
I always mess this up. I will disable real view. That can cause crashing. All right, and enter a replay mode. All right, let's back it up a little bit more. Right about there. Play. All right, let me catch up some of these con uh, these comments. We'll watch it from over here. Oh, let's get out of the window frame. <laughs> Uh, what what uh, instrument rating cost in U.S. Uh, Casserone? I don't actually know right now. Um, the the price has changed so much, so I don't have a good estimate for you. I'm sorry, man. OT says, "Hey V1, how's it going? Just a quick question. I've noticed the VNAV dot in the flight factor is green, and the Tolus is magenta. Which one is correct? Um, green is correct." Oh man, I don't even remember. I'm pretty sure it, if it's on VNAV, if your GPS, it should be magenta. Oh man, that makes me look bad, but I actually don't know, man. I'm trying to think. I, I want to say the green brick is correct, but the magenta dot is correct for VNAV path. The VNAV path, the v dot that you're talking about should be magenta and the brick should be green or pfft. I don't know, man. I honestly, I wish I knew. That's what happens when you take eight weeks off. In the sim, can you have sharklets on the wings? Uh, you can if you do. There is a mod for it. Wow, look at the touchdown on that. Uh, spoilers coming out. There we go. Daniel Smith says, "Slam this one for you for me." Well, I definitely did. I hope that was a good slammer for you. <laughs> uh, Rigor M says, I mean, you can always stream with your kids when your kids keep you up at night. Yeah, that's true. Except when you don't have any sleep, you end up taxing without clearances, and uh, it can make for a pretty rough stream. But hey, I said we'd put it down near the numbers, and we sure did. BKG says, definitely survival landing. Sh excellent short field technique. Uh, thank you, sir. Alright, let's back it up, watch it from outside. Dale Smith says they're overstaffed. They have 500 more pilots and 400 more cabin crew members because of the max grounding. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I bet they do have some little overstaffing issues. I'd be in the skies if I wasn't legally blind, V1. Alberto, hey, I know you would, man, but you can be in the virtual skies with us. You can be in the virtual skies, so we are here together. All right, 10 feet above the threshold, just past the numbers. Hey, that's a good short field landing if you ask me. Let's go watch it again from the runway itself. That's a pretty sunset with the sun in the background. Look at that, just clearing the trees. Very nice. Oh, yeah. I mean, 400? Really? Whatever. Well, I'm not worried about it. Yeah, that was firm. I'm not going to lie. That was firm, but right on the center line. All right, guys, one more. I'm going to back it up, and I'm going to end the stream there. Guys, I really appreciate your support. The people of the Bahamas are definitely going to appreciate your support. All these donations are going to be sent to the uh, Red Cross for hurricane relief. And you guys are an awesome group of supporters. And just glad to interact with you guys on the stream and in the Discord. So thanks again for tuning in. And I hope you have a blessed day wherever you are watching from. We'll catch you on the next one.